Yeah, I was asked this um, interesting question of going, you know, having like a, a school reunion and then getting a kind of a, a nostalgic reaction to that. Now, that would be true. You know, when, when, we're, when we're studying enlightenment, if you get a nostalgic reaction to anything, any event, to any group of people, that would be an ego event. And the best way to, to see that, to understand it, and this was one of the greatest um, things that really helped me a lot uh, in my spiritual understanding. Uh, and I got this from my spiritual teacher, Muji, who was referring to his, uh, one of his spiritual teachers, Ramana Maharishi, and, and, and it really blew, because I was an addict, and you know, I would, uh, one of my main addictions was food addiction. So every time, you know, you could say I would have a nostalgia every time I would have these donuts, you know, or, you know, it'd be like I'd have this euphoria. It's like donuts are my friends, and I'm eating them, and I'd get this happy reaction from them. Uh, or, um, actually, uh, with addiction, you can have addiction or get get what you call i'm going to coin the word in the in an addictive fashion nostalgia is a high like a like a happiness like a temporary happiness because this thing is available right now so if i, if I saw the donuts and eating the donuts i was happy alcoholics tend to be happy when they're drinking their alcohol or getting on their way to buy their alcohol um you know and um workaholics you know when they get a pay rise uh, codependents, love addicts, you know, when this person's around. So there's various, various things and you get these highs and then you become addicted. It's like, oh, I want to go back for more and more and more. You know, I feel good with this person. I feel good when I'm eating that food. I feel good when I'm drinking that. I feel good whenever I go to the Bahamas. But London's awful. The Bahamas is good. So all of these, like, like um, things. And, um, and here's the thing, and I think this was very, very, one of the most transformational things I've heard. And Muji said, it's like, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it with my languaging, but he said, like, if you, um, if you want a donut and you think a donut can make you happy, then what happens is that you now are having, you're having a thought within your ego that's waiting and wanting to get that donut. You know, and then when you eat, when you get the donut, the donut could either be it could be a girlfriend, an exam result, or whatever, meet a person. When you get the donut, you know this thought of wanting to get a donut. I haven't got a donut. I'm looking forward to my donut. It it goes quiet, and you get you get a high. And that high is not a high, but it's like because the the ego shuts up, because it's got something it wants. You now experience the, pres you know, the presence of God. You experience the eternal now. You experience the presence of love, which is always here, which is obscured by the ego wanting to get something. And then it sh it's shutting up. And then, and then after you, and then you, that's often the way you get entrapment. Because you get this like high from the donut, or you get the high from the person, or the reunion, and, and you suddenly like, and it's like, well, the ego was shutting, was like secretly holding this stuff in. And then when it gets the thing, it goes, plays dead for a little while. And then you, you feel this thing. And the ego associates that it, it wants more of that thing. But here's the thing, especially if you're an addict, is that later on it wants more. It's like, well, I felt good when I met my friends. We should... I should orchestrate a new reunion for next weekend. Or maybe even every week, every day. So, because the ego secretly wants to get that feeling again and again and again. So, hence the thing is, and the Course talks about this with specialness. You know, it's like, actually, yeah, I, I would work on it, you see. What, what's so special? If, if um, I meet a group of people and... Um, and I'm really uh, happy, it's an ego thing. Because actually, in truth, you know, ha happiness, joy, freedom, and this eternal state of unchanging love, 
is, you know, there isn't anything higher than that. So that you had a fluctuation up means that, you know, there's some ego involvement which can be neutralized. Uh, one of my favorite lessons in A Course in Miracles is making things meaningless. You know, I, I actually think that those early lessons are at the level of enlightenment. So it's like, you know, um, and here's, a, here's another tool, actually. Another tool for taking out the specialness is to, it's is the early lessons of A Course in Miracles. It's like, you know, you, you, look at, you, look at, you look at a friend, you try and do it like not being too obvious. You look at a friend and inside you say, he's meaningless. And then you look at the plant for a second and say the plant's me equally meaningless. So you look at the light bulb for a second and say the light bulb's equally Then you look at another one of your friends and, and then that's meaningless too. And then you're neutralising, you're, you're making nothing more special or less special. Because every moment is equal, you see. Every person, every flower pot, everything. Once all of that, then you transcend the world. Otherwise, you seem to have ups and downs from the world. So you uh, transcend it through that way. So even, like, especially if you're a student of enlightenment, you know, getting euphoria from a group of people, from a food item, from a glass of alcohol, from a special person, you, you would release that as well, you know, at, at that level, because they, they operate. And it's okay to release that, because at the highest level, you know, there is only love at the highest level. So you're releasing the dualistic binds to that. 